The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. I've always Basil Chapman here, sitting here for Tommy O'Brien, just a sudden switch in the last minute. And, uh, of course, I cannot do uh, what Tommy does so well and give you all the fundamentals. But let's just look at the markets as it stands right now. I think we're becoming somewhat vulnerable. Uh, if you think either side is going to give in for this uh, debate or debate, this uh, this. Uh, fiasco going on right now because it shouldn't be it, this should not have happened at all you've had since i think in february they started wanting to talk this is just ridiculous but that's the way it is in politics so here we are we're looking at the dow which closed at 33,286 on uh, monday the futures right now are down a little bit not too bad down 71 at 33,290 so the patterns that i like to look at let me just get this right here, and we'll do it just as we're talking. There we go. So the patterns that I always like to look at, a straight line up or straight line down, an arch formation or a cup formation. And those could be V-shaped formations where you go from one point down and then back again to that point, or one point up and then back again. Most importantly, when this lower gets straight line down, there's your straight line down. There's the first one. It makes this inverted V-shaped pattern. Here's the second one. This is the futures. And this goes to peak A and a peak B, gray A and gray B, because you didn't have confirmation of the technicals being strong. So it's A. I'm not going to change it right now. A and B. So that hasn't taken out the left side low. So this is still valid. This is another A right here. It hasn't taken out the upside. Well, what happens is, in this particular technique, well, if I can just get that right back again. Oh, did I just lose it? Where did it go? There it is. Um, when you make this arch formation and fail to peak A or B, the first or second highest peak after that low bar was made, and you take out that left side low, it can go quite a bit low. But if you hold the left side low, then you can actually make an a second arch formation, I call that the lowercase h, it goes to a lowercase m. There you've got the h, and you're making the m pattern. And that just says it's going to be harder and harder to break above the left side high. I'm talking about the futures right now. And in this particular instance, the high that would be in the futures would be the high of the 10th of May, which is at 33,854. But there's a good chance that you're going to take out this left side low. But wait a minute. Look at the E-mini. This is a continuous contract. It's, it's trading right now at 41.91, uh, down 13.75. That made an alternate count F slash C. But in the actual SPY itself, there's no other way I can count this. This is actually a peak C, and the Chapman methodology, a buy signal going to a buy mode invariably will go to a D, and then you've got to be careful. So what I say to subscribers to my opening call, that's my daily service here at, the, at TFNN, my newsletter, um, I'm anticipating that either we have a little bit of a bounce today somehow or other, maybe hit the 420.72 level, or just go under it for what I call a peak C1 and a peak C2. Now, why do I talk about that? Because I'm anticipating that there's going to be some conflagration going on politically and that this market is not going to like it over the next few days. We've had some optimism, but don't believe that. Come on, anybody who says we're close to a deal, you're never close to a deal until the deal is done. And then there's always compromises made. So as far as I'm concerned, this is a period fraught with uh, uh, a zigzag kind of move, maybe like a yo-yo or a sine wave. But in the Dow's case, it's been making lower highs and lower lows. In the S&P, it's been making higher highs and higher lows. But I think that's about to change. Why? Because the QQQ, remember in the Chapman Wave methodology, we're always looking for a buy signal to be upgraded to a buy mode that can go to at least a D. Well, there's your D, leg D as I talk right now. 336.28 in the uh, QQQ, 
made a high yesterday of 338, I think it was. Yeah, 338.67. Look at the NQ. That is the futures made in a leg D. Even this morning it ran higher. Now it's down 57 at 13,846. So what am I anticipating? I'm anticipating that even though the technicals in the index 100, this is the E-mini NDX 100 continuous contract, I'm suspecting that we're going to at least get choppiness to come down towards the 13,500s. We're at 13,844 right now. That's going to be the big near-term test, but then I think we can go lower than that. I think the upside is kind of limited for now. I just don't know what's going to make the market suddenly break to the upside. And if you're looking at the uh, um, IWM, which is the Russell 2000, this is trading down as 32 cents at 177.94. A much better action that we've, than we've seen for a little while, but not good enough because it's bumped into the resistance that was made with the high of the 18th of uh, April, and that was at 178.63. Yesterday's high was 179.07, fractionally higher. I'm calling that a leg C, but uh, most importantly, it says that you're in a position right now where the technicals have improved a lot, but the price hasn't gone even close to the 200-period moving average of 181.68, and that really is an issue. I mean, we, I'm not even talking about the weekly chart, which looks terrible, and the monthly chart doesn't look very good at all. Now, this is going to be the issue. The gold right now is down 13. And we've been looking at gold. I said this peak D that was made in the Chapman methodology uh, on the, I think it was the 1st of April. Let me just double check. On the uh, tw on the 3rd of May, did I say April? 3rd of May, 2000 and, uh, 2000 and, God, why is it so hard to see? 2080, yeah, 854 the following session, 2085.4, unusual to have the futures having double tops like that, made a peak D. And I said, if you measure the move, the vertical move from the high that was made in April to the high that was made in May, you'll see that the MACD was very weak. The stochastic was very weak. The on-balance volume was good, but it reversed immediately right at the ictus at the very moment that it made the high. Uh, the on-balance volume made a high and then turned around. So this says to me, gold is pulling back very sharply. I'll just do silver now. We may as well. Silver trading right now down 39 cents at 23.47, right on the 200 period exponential moving average, not looking very good at all. Ha, dollar. The dollar right now is trading up. 31 ticks at 103.56. And you can see that the dollar is really, it's had a good move from 100.79 to where it is right now at 103.56. Remember the dollar in the 100 area, to really get a significant move, you need to move about four or five points. So this is uh, so far quite good, but not great. The 200 period moving average of 103.76, I think that's going to be tagged. And that's going to be an issue because I think it corresponds exactly to what we're looking at in the market. And uh, that just tells me that we've got to be somewhat careful here. I'll just do this as we're about. This is, here we go, market, morning market kickoff show for Tommy O'Brien. I'm sitting in Basil Chapman. I usually do the Tiger to 50 hour coming up at 10 o'clock. So I'm sitting in here and the, the um, PLT, the bonds are down 34, picks at 100.40. Not very, I'll be if you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
years' experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks, we're back, and we, I, my pleasure, actually, once again, having done it for a little while, to have Kevin Hinks on the line. Kevin, how are you? Good morning, Basil. Good to talk to you. Yeah, it's very good to talk to you. I was in Chicago a couple of weekends ago, but unfortunately, I never got to the city. I was just in and out for a family event, and uh, didn't get. I was so looking for. I love Chicago. I love the architecture of Chicago. Just didn't get to see the city. But uh, how are you? I'm good, Basil. You know, I'm looking at the market today that we're learning a couple things as we get through this, right? I I'm going to give you and your viewers an actual positive outlook on the debt ceiling. Basil, I we think they're good. down to one real talking point, and that is the spending caps. It sounds like, remember, I, I, I spoke on uh, the, the TD Ameritrade Network about the four major issues about the debt ceiling. The COVID funds left over, pulling those back. The energy permitting, streamlining the process. That's what Joe Manchin is spearheading. The work requirements for food, financial, and health care aid, right? I think those are all settled. I think the spending caps is the last thing they're working on. So I think it's a little more positive in terms of the debt ceiling. And I think the market thinks that, too, because... Bonds would be rallying, not selling off, Basil. The VIX would be higher, not where it is now. So I think the market is discounting any problems with the debt ceiling, even though politicians are screaming at the top of their lungs. So the market's just not – the market – let's put it this way. The market just doesn't believe them, Basil. So, so it means that it, it could continue like this uh, almost until the last minute because that's kind of what politicians tend to do. Uh, you know, I was I was looking at the charts, and if it wasn't for uh, this discussion about the the debt, the limits, etc., there are there are, there's a broadening out of the market as I see it. And what's really important is the October low. Every time we get something like this, one of the things that I've been looking at is. We, we start to pull back, but we pull back from a higher level. So it makes that October low, uh, it, it, something really terrible has to happen to get down there. And I just, at this particular point, I don't see it. So I'm kind of in your camp, but politicians like to wait until the very last minute before they give in. So I think we might still have some choppiness over the week. What, what, what are you going to, are, are there particular stocks that you're looking at right now that are earnings, et cetera, that are also going to give you a tell? 
Well, I think here's what I think you have to look at. I think NVIDIA's earnings tomorrow after the close are very important, not only because, you know, AI is such a buzzword topic right now with all these companies, but I don't know how much it's going to show up on their bottom line. NVIDIA has run an incredibly long way. It's incredibly overbought. It's been soft the last couple of days, but, you know, the NASDAQ in general, has run a long way and has been overbought. So I think the bigger risk to this market is not the debt ceiling. I think it's the fact, and James Bullard alluded to it yesterday, Basil, and that is inflation data is not going down. If you look at personal income and outlays, the data coming out Friday, all the consensus expectations for that number are the year-over-year headline up from 4.2 to 4.3, the core PCE year over year is flat at 4.6 Basel for the third month in a row. That's what the expectations are. So I think the bigger risk to this market is what James Bullard alluded to and the fact that inflation isn't coming down. You you saw the wage inflation from the last uh, payrolls number. It was up. It was higher year over year. So inflation's not coming down at the rate they need it to or coming down at all, Basil. I think that is the biggest risk to this market right now, if you, not if you look at the, the debt ceiling. If you look at the average price of an automobile sale, um, I think, what, 48000 This is That's a very high number. So that means that the that people are prepared to put more money to work, but that also adds to this inflationary aspect, doesn't it? Well, look at used car prices on the last CPI number, up 4.4%. So used car prices are still out of control on the upside. They've come down slightly, but they just reignited to the upside. Even though new cars were down slightly, used cars are, are still uh, you know, very you. high and going higher. So I, you know, I think there's still inflation in the pipeline, but it's, it's, it's plateaued. I guess that's some good news, but the Fed is looking for much better than plateauing, as you know, Basil. What stocks are you going to be talking about this uh, this afternoon in your show? Uh, and folks, if you want to know about options, this is a fantastic show to listen to. What, what are you going to be talking about? Yeah, earnings today in Palo Alto Networks that come out after the bell today. Earnings in uh, Kohl's that come out before the open tomorrow. And then Toll Brothers Housing that come out after the bell today. So three good stocks coming out with earnings either after the bell today or tomorrow morning before the open. So, yeah, we've got a great show planned today. Yesterday we covered uh, Lowe's and Dick's Sporting Goods, so those were very interesting discussions to have. We'll have more of those today, Basil. And Toll Brothers, of course, uh, defying everything that you'd think with the high rates. Toll Brothers has had a fantastic move, even just uh, uh, this year alone, going from 40 to 54. I mean, that's a big percentage move. Yeah, I, l listen, I think housing is, I, I, I believe, it's my personal belief, Basil, that since the, the housing crisis in 2008-9, that we're extremely low in terms of housing inventory. So I think when rates spike higher, a queue forms for housing. It doesn't, they don't go away. They, I think they, they, they just wait. Buyers wait. And when, when rates uh, stabilize or come slightly down, they come flooding back into the market. I think that's why you're seeing a big recovery in a lot of the home builders, Basil. Yeah, I think you've pinpointed a whole bunch of things that are really important. So I'm going to be watching this very closely. But I, I, you're probably correct in the it, just isolating and then just saying to yourself, um, there are just one or two factors that need to be re really discussed in terms of the, 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 the debt uh, limit. Yeah. And I, I think uh, we'll be watching that very closely because um, the market is on edge here. You can see it kind of wants to go up and then it wants to go down. Uh, and then some sectors like the semiconductors have done very well, like you mentioned, NVIDIA. And that's just telling you that there is demand out there. But it's I think at this point, it's still very selective. Yeah, I, you know, I think this is a market that's trading in different ways. I mean, just look at the last week, Basil. Foot Locker down significantly. Uh, Nike and Dick Sporting Goods sell off with Foot Locker, but, but uh, Dick Sporting Goods was able to beat on earnings and reaffirm guidance and put up pretty good numbers. So, yeah, I think every stock in earnings season is its own mix 
mini story. We, we, we put those all together and we form the uh, macro look at this market. But it, right during earnings season, it's made up of a bunch of little stories. I think tomorrow, NVIDIA is a key driver. Remember, this is a market that's rallied on the back of very few names, right? Yes. And NVIDIA is one yes. of those names. I think that's a key number tomorrow after the bell, Basil. And, and also, NVIDIA is telling us, as you say, AI, but it's also a part auto. It's it's in every area that's, oh, yeah. that is important. And maybe it's just gotten a little ahead of itself. So we'll be watching this. Exactly. Very, I'm really looking forward to your show. I think you're going to pinpoint a bunch of things that people can actually do to, uh, to be prepared for it. Thank you so much, Kevin. Great to speak with you and have a good day. Thanks for having me on, Basil. Have a great day. Thank you. Uh, folks, we'll be back. Uh, Basil Chaplin here sitting here for Tommy O'Brien. We'll be right back. Oh, it'll be the open of the market very soon. So stand by. The futures are down. Uh, Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. FNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're back. Market is open. Basil Chapman here for Tommy O'Brien. This is morning market kickoff time. And what we're looking at, talk about kickoff. Let me just go right here to the Dow. The Dow. Oh, did I type that? Let me just type it in again. Right there. Uh, dollar I N D U. There it goes. Uh, the the Dow is down 152 at 33,128, right on the 200 period exponential moving average. This is important because it's starting to weaken the daily, and now the the month the yeah the weekly chart. 
The nine is still over the 14, but really close to turning down. This is going to be a very important uh, week, I, I would say, for the market overall. Looking at the S&P, the S&P uh, cash right now is down at 20 at 41.73. Now, what I said earlier on, and I'll say it again, is in, in my work, that peak G in the Chapman Wave methodology, almost it's like a right arm extension. It's really not like a, a rogue wave because it wasn't in one swoop to the upside. It was three bars with a doji candle at 4186.92 on the 1st of May. Then it pulled back, made a lower low. And if it didn't, that would be different. But it did. And that means we have to start a brand new buy mode because uh, um, peak G, uh, there's no H. So you have to see what's the wave count. So the wave count, as I see it, is A, B, and this is a C. There should be some attempt to get very close to the high that was made. I've got it in the SPY. Let me just give you the SPY figure right now of 420.72. That was uh, the high of uh, two days ago, three days ago. And um, this is going to be important because uh, some of it is a, a little strange. I had a question in the den. Uh, when does it I'll give you the exact question? Because I'll do it more in my show coming up at 10 o'clock. But it's a, it's a very good question. The question is, uh, Basil, where in your sequence of identified peaks or patterns or price movement do buy signals typically turn into a buy mode? Does it require a particular configuration of stochastic? I'm so pleased you saw that. In fact, I didn't see that very last part, even though I'd written down here for a really good example of a failure pattern. So let me explain what I'm looking at. <clears throat> this is still early in the game. I've got a buy sequence that went to a buy mode because the MACD, and this is the S&P, the SPY, uh, daily because the MACD turned up positively. The stochastic ran over 80%, went to 88% after the peak B. We broke above peak B in a quite a strong move. The unbalanced volume is good. Everything here is suggesting, even though we've got all this bad news sitting, potential bad news out there with the market in really not sure what to do which way, but there are a couple of areas that have shown strength. But in this particular instance, there's no other way I can count this as a peak C. It could fail. It's really unusual to fail at a peak C when everything is in buy mode sequence. And I'll, I'll explain it best because I had a question. Could I look at uh, Pfizer? And Pfizer, if you look at the weekly chart of Pfizer, let me just get that to work. There it is. Click, click. Okay. You see this weekly chart right here. I've got an up arrow where the MACD turned around sharply, the stochastic turned around from under 20%, under 10%, even maybe 8%, and then soared to the upside, on balance volume went up, the nine period moving average eventually crossed positive, so it went peak A, doji candle pull back, peak B pulls back, and then it had a very strong move, this is the weekly chart of Pfizer, PFE is a symbol, and it went to a peak C, I'm going to move it over like this, let's just say I did not know, but the MACD stochastic on balance volume is lagging, but it's running nicely, that should have gone to a D. Now the question came in, and thank you so much for that, for that full uh, statement of your question, because you really covered exactly what I look for. So. Does it require particular configurations of stochastic? That was just one of the things that you pointed out. Well, look, the stochastic is very good. And then what does it do? It goes to a strong leg C, pulls back. It should go to a D. But look what happened to the stochastic. It went over 80%, and then it starts to drop. And that, as long as the stochastic is holding over 80%, 80 that's a really good sign. And if that uh, continues to hold, <clears throat> it should go to a D. The stochastic failed. Look what happened right here in 2021, going into the December time frame. <clears throat> it goes to a peak D and then an E. Look, the MACD is strong. Look what happened to the stochastic and the on-balance volume. Both of them very confirmed the rally to E <clears throat> and then pull back sharply, stochastic went sharply under 80% very quickly and drank the price down. So that's what I'm looking at here. That's why that peak C failed and it made this V-shaped pattern, the Eiffel Tower, straight up and straight down, took out the left side low. So let's go back to what the question was and why I'm saying the SPY so far 
with the stochastic, even today with it pulling back, <clears throat> the stochastic is at 88%. And that's just suggesting that there's enough strength to have maybe just one pop. It doesn't have to go to 420.73 to go to leg D. If it fails in the 420.60s <clears throat> and then pulls back sharply with a stochastic, then uh, in the next couple of days going under 80%, <clears throat> That'll be the trigger to say, uh-oh, this is going to be a sell signal. So that's what I'm looking at. So I hope I'll answer the question that a buy signal gets upgraded to a buy mode if either leg B is very strong, the stochastic gets quickly to 80, maybe 84%. MACD is good. <clears throat> Nine period moving average crosses over the 14. <clears throat> but um, it can fail. It's not like it's a fail-proof thing. It's rare, but it can fail. But in this particular instance, it's saying there's just enough strength to be able to try to get very close to the 420, maybe 50 level, and then maybe we, we tank from there, or that's a breakout to the upside. So I'm looking at this as scan saying, <clears throat> you tell me, I've done my homework, <laughs> you tell me, I'm prepared to go short, but under certain, uh, certain conditions, that's what I said to subscribers, but we're waiting for those conditions to be met. Now, the other thing is this, um, on the chain. Yeah. Um, okay. So a couple of questions. AQST. AQST is a quest of therapeutics. I have to tell you these biotechs. I'm going to tell you a sub story right now in a moment uh, about something that I we I planned. I did everything. I did. we did the homework and we got in, but then. Um, I made the stop a little tight and we got stopped out and we could have had two positions in this and it would have done fantastic. I'll get to that a little later on. But AQST is 2.44, trading up two cents uh, right now. So I had done the homework on this. I had a leg D uh, back in early May. I haven't looked at it since. And look what happened. It went buy signal to buy mode, held the 200 period moving average. And that D is called leg D a floating letter until it makes a peak. Well, it went leg D, leg D, right here at on the uh, 5th of May, it went to $2.40. The very next day, it went to two forty cents. So that's still a D, that's still a D, and then it makes a peak D because on the 11th, it goes to 2.65, and the next day, the high is 2.54, so that makes a peak. Remember, it's a floating letter until it makes a peak. I'll be right back. It's pulled back, and now it's having a really good rally, and it looks like it wants to try to get to the 260s. It's at 244 right now, up two cents. I'll be back in a moment. We're looking at a, a quest of therapeutics. Dow is down 133. S&P is down 18. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now 
at TFNN.com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi folks, Basil Trapping here for Tommy O'Brien. We're looking at AQST, a quest of therapeutics. I suspect that it's going to try to tag that 260 level. Most importantly, I had to raise this E was somewhere over here because I hadn't looked at it for a while. Now it's here. So it's made a peak E. It's still the MACD and the weekly is very strong. The stochastics pulling back to 74%. On balance funds pulling back. So I'm going to suggest that it's going to be in a trading range. And I would not, I'm going to draw this in. We'll see. We'll look at it again in a, a week or so, maybe. Uh, and I'm going to draw this in. And I'm going to say, I suspect that it's in this rectangle formation. And it could go a little higher. If it goes to the 280 level, that is really fantastic. But I think it's going to stall to the 260s and then kind of hover around here, be in the middle. But it's acting extremely well. Looking out... The MACD, the monthly chart, has turned up. The nine-period moving average is still got a long way to go to get positive. You'd have to see this up in the 380, 420 area for at least a week, maybe even two weeks, for that MACD uh, to, to so for the nine-period moving average to cross positive. But the stochastic is just starting to rally now. So this is a, a work in progress. And it has these huge moves and then gives back a chunk of it the very next month. So I suspect that at any point, if it goes under $1.78 on a closing basis, this move is done. You have to now wait for the next big, uh, since it's biotech, the next FDA or whatever it is, uh, or a paper that comes out. Whatever it is, it has to be uh, very influential in, in carrying it for a sustained move. Now, it's had the move, it's digesting, and maybe have one retest. If you look at the technicals, my, my eye says that the left side high uh, earlier in May, and where we are right now, the MACD is turning positive, but it's still very weak. Stochastic's way down 65. I think it's starting to, it's running out of upside power. So it can go a little higher, but I think the two, I, I wouldn't be surprised if the 254 area is strong resistance and it just needs a little more time. So that's just that question. So the question came in about PF. And really, I've had a lot of people ask me uh, in, the, in the, not the biotechs, but in the pharmaceuticals, what's happening there? Well, there are certain drugs, uh, certain uh, medications that are coming, coming about that are really, uh, they could be life-changing for a lot of people in the area of dietary uh, aspects, um, but in many areas, and all the pharmacies, especially the biotechs, but especially the big pharmacies, now that they've gotten deeply into this, um, they, some of them have bought, bought biotechs, biotech companies. So th they've morphed a little bit from the classic pharmaceuticals. So I'm looking at this, and I would just recommend to you that in terms of Getting into Pfizer, the steepness of the move to the downside says, if you're looking out, maybe six to nine, even say eight to ten weeks, I can see that within the next two months, there's a move towards the 42, 43 area, about four, four points. So that's about 10, 11 percent. But there is a risk of a 10 percent to 15 percent pullback on the spike that you saw yesterday, which looks purely instrumental in terms of um, news-related spikes. 
And that looks to me like a news ready spike. Let's look at it again together, maybe today's Tuesday, a little later in the week, or maybe even next week, because if it starts to hold about 39.50, hits 40.20, that's a different thing altogether because now it's starting to make higher highs and higher lows. Right now, it's just the start of a turnaround to the upside. I like it looking out because um, it's not in the steep move. It's taken time from the high in the 60s uh, down to the low uh, in the 20s that was made, uh, sorry, in the 30s, 30, the, the last low of about 36. I, I like what's going on. But it's just a little early and it's very silly. It doesn't look to me like there are fund managers that are getting into this for a sustained move. I wouldn't be surprised if right now, over the last three days, they start to nibble. And that just says to me, watch 37. If 37 is taken out on a closing basis, I wouldn't touch it now. But if it holds and it doesn't even get to 30, it's a 30. 816 doesn't even hit 3750 this week instead it holds here then i start to look at it but think of it more as a longer term uh, uh maybe almost a buy and hold but and and i would do this on uh, first i don't think you use options i would have looked at this as an option it's at 38 i would say a 40 call going into july or august to me, that would be a really nice way to do it, but you don't do that. So I'm, I'm only mentioning it just as one of the possibilities. Um, a question, ARWR, 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 there we go. That's what it is. Went to a G session. Remember the Chapman methodology for quite a long while now. In fact, for about two or three years, I've been saying a G stash C alternate count in the Chapman wave invariably goes to a D. And there it is. It went to the D in Arrowhead Pharma Biotech. It went to the D right there. Um, now, I haven't been able to put a down arrow to say it's in a cell. It's it's in a cell signal, but not yet a cell mode. But I am going to put this in because <clears throat> the MACD is weak, stochastic is weak, nine period moving average is very close to turning down. That doesn't mean you can't rally. I'm just saying that's the designation right now. Um, 38, oh, I'd say 30. A close above 38.70 in the next two days would be good. But if it pulls back, you've got to watch the 35s. If the break under 35 says, uh-oh, not ready for prime time yet. Has these big spikes like a biotech and then pulls back. Next question came in. Could I look at oh the general market? So let's look at the e-mini right now. Of course, I haven't been able to do anything. I'm, I'm on the show, so I haven't been able to do any trading or anything like that. So this... You see, the stochastic is at 87, 88%. The MACD is good. So I can say, I'm going to put this up arrow to say it's in a buy signal. And now I have to analyze to say, is it in a buy mode? So here's your peak A right now, the one-minute chart. A pulls back, has another A right there, gray A. That becomes a B. I like what I'm seeing. And that's why I was saying to subscribers, have patience. I think there's going to be a flurry to the upside how much, I just don't know yet, but that's what I'm looking at. So now I can draw this in as a cup formation right here. Cup formation right there. Uh, it's a little late to do this, but I will do that anyway. Normally what I would do is I go from the left side. I'd look for either the ictus of the low to say, hey, I could get, see a, a, um, a bar symmetry with a number of bars on the left side equal the number of bars on the right side. I think we're already there, so this one's already late as I'm doing it right here. Okay, there it is. So we've already surpassed that. This is, I would have done it a little more conservatively. I would conservatively. I would have taken it from that high, um, and that would have been just about right. This is still a leg B. We haven't made a peak because we're moving in 25 cent increments. This is still a leg B. I love what's going on right now. I want to see a rally. I, I need to see a rally because um, what we're looking at in terms of um, in terms of the marketplace, the negativity is going to be there's little rumors, a, a rumor to the one side, a rumor to the other side. And that's what I'm looking at right now, that I think we're in this flurry of activity with a yo-yo format. And that just says rallies are bought, sorry, rallies are sold and declines are bought. So selling gets pressure on the, on the upside because you find cushioning, but then it stalls because the rally gets filtered out and it starts to pull back. I like what I'm seeing right now. Um, Oh, is that the music? No way. That... Yeah, we've got one more segment to go. This is 
the Morning Market Kickoff Show. Tommy O'Brien can do it. I'm sitting in. Basil Chapman, I will be back, of course, for my show at 10. Check out my opening call, my daily newsletter. Let's see, the Dow's come back nicely. It's only down 54. SP's now only down 9. Oh, what a fascinating TFNN one. has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit Visit the front page of TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. In this final segment, um, before we go to the 10 o'clock news, um, and let me just show a couple of things here. Uh, within the context of the S&P, <clears throat> there's a chance, and I have to say it's a chance, but I, there's no other way I can count this. This is a buy mode at this particular point. It could fail. There should be at least a test of the high that was made on the 19th a couple of days ago of 4204.92.12.91. Uh, so that 4212.91 level, let me just put it in 4212.91, we could get close, we could break above it, but my suspicion is that we could get somewhat close. And then I think the market is vulnerable for a couple of days as the whole thing with the, uh, the death ceiling just no party is just going to give up anything until the last minute. So that's the way I'm looking at it. And as we get closer and closer, so the market is going to be a little bit more nervous about what happens. Eventually, of course, we know that these things, the default, nah, we, America, we don't want to default. So I'm looking at this and saying, how does, how does the market react? How does the market react afterwards? So let's just forget about that right now. Look at levels to watch on the S&P. Uh, we're at 4183. A close anytime in the next week. 
uh, going into Friday, a close below uh, four. Let's just make it 41.29. Hey, make it 41.30. A close below 41.30, that's 53 points from here, would say, uh oh. We're going into a digestive phase and not a major cell, but just a kind of a digestive phase. And that's what we're looking at. A close above 42.22, a kind of a breakout would be, um, I would I would have to say 42.22 would, would suggest that the weekly charts are going to improve even more and that we could have a pullback at any point, but it'll be the sideways digestive action. So that's the way I'm looking at it right now. I'm more positive the negative, but on a very short-term basis, uh, ready to pull the short trigger. I haven't done that yet. Um, and mostly we're still in long positions, so long the Dow actually from the October low and the new Dow, three times long from the October low. And we have trading positions in and out uh, between that time. So I'm going to be back with the Tiger Tech. This is our checkout for opening call. Be back with the news in a moment. Stay tuned. And uh, Dow is now only down. Yeah.